and we want these to start very small. Let's do a transform as well here. Transform. Let's transform it down to something like this. All right. And we might tweak this animation later, depending on what we're going to do. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to write this out as an Alembic again. So let's do rob Alembic output. Just make a path for it. Just say path equals, uh, we're going to just call it, I guess, plant slash side branch. All right. And uh, let's plug it in. Let's put it to publish. Again, these what these presets are super useful. Uh, build hierarchy for a buff. Let's call it side branch. Just do, just do the entire frame range. It's not going to be that big. And we're going to load it back in. Just let's just reference the original. All right. Oh, we're on frame 69. Nice. Uh, all right. So let's display. Let's see. We have the same thing that we had before. We're not going to add the drops here yet because we're going to do that later on the entire plant. Uh, well, the entire plant without the leaves, else it's going to just be too, heavy, too heavy. But we're going to move this out of the way and just copy this to our plant. So not much will have changed here. So it's doing the growing in, blah, 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 something like that. So that works. Uh, but we now we need to time offset. So there's a little trick here. And that's called uh, set prim intrinsic. This is the reason why we're using Alembics instead of BGOs. Uh, it's also possible to offset uh, BGO sequences. The problem is with BGO sequences, it's on an integer frame. It's like on a per frame basis. You, you mean you can write out subframes, but, but the Alembics is just a lot easier. So if we select this Alembic and we go to geometry spreadsheet and we look into primitives and then prim intrinsic like we were before, so ABC frame, this is the internal frame that the Alembic is reading. So that's, um, uh, and like and intrinsics are uh, stuff that's intrinsic to the, to the thing. So there's also the, the pactful transforms, there's a whole bunch of stuff and uh, like, uh, like the pact pivot and a whole bunch of stuff. And, you can you can you can actually use this and overwrite the stuff that might generally you don't use it that much but it, it can be super powerful for example this is one of those so what we can do is we can set this this perimeter intrinsic with an attribute so let's just first try it with a wrangle we are just ourselves and let's just type set prim intrinsic and let's just look at the help file so let's just f1 on, on it Let's look. All right. So what do we need? Geo handle the the name uh, of what do we want to uh, like? Which intrinsic do we want to change or set? Primitive number, uh, value. So that can be the attribute, and then just mode set. All right. So let's just try that. So first, uh, so geo handle zero. We want to set ABC frame, primitive number for every point, because later we're going to do it on the, because uh, it's a packed thing. Later we're going to do it on the copy, so it's for every point number, because they're packed. Point number, uh, value is going to be the attribute. Let's put it to zero for now. And then set. All right, let's see if this works. So it doesn't error, so it seems to work. So you can see if we're on here, it's at this intrinsic thing, and then we're gonna click on this. It's still not working. Let's see if we did everything right. Uh, just try with zero, no. Why is it not working? So, the issue was that it only works. You need to specify that it's a float value here. So if I type one, it's not working. If I type 
and is working because we need to override it as a, as a float value. So let's just do, do something ourselves. Let's just make a float for now. Uh, float uh, grow equals channel float. So we just have a slider and then let's put our attribute in there or our variable. Uh, so let's put it in there and now we have a slider. And you can see this slider is going to set the uh, lambic frame. And you can see this can be subframes. So that's going to be very nice. So if I go out and you can see I can drag and now I'm offsetting the time of my alembic. That's something you cannot really do with BGOs. So that means we can also now use this to, well, to, to like we can put any attribute we want in here. If we were to type just at uh, frame or just maybe at time, not at frame, at time. Then it would just be like this. And then we type time divided by three. It would be three times as slow. We type divided by 30. It would be 30 times as slow. You can see it's going to be very slow. So, but again, we can do it with an attribute. For example, our co attribute. So, and this will also work on our copy. So if we just do it after this thing, because if we just look over here, we don't want to pack, by the way, because they're already packed. Uh, these will also have the, the Alembic frames on them. So if I copy and paste our, our thing here, by the way, this needs to run over primitives. So I had set on points before. There was also a reason why it wasn't working. Uh, but what I want to do is, well, so this thing will have it grow. Let's just say that we want grow to be we can maybe let's so we hand animate it or so we mm, let's just hand animate it first let's do grow let's start it a little bit later let's just grow let's just move ahead in time a little bit let's put it to one Okay, so I think about three should be the entire thing. All right, and maybe what I wanna say is that we want to say that uh, grow minus equals at curve view. Uh, let's see if we actually have our curve view because we have our curve view from our curve here. I'm not sure if this is still on there. So curve view, because remember that's the zero to one on the curve. If we have it here, it's still there. This is on primitives, so we cannot just do it like that. Let's first load it in. So float curve view equals points, or we need to grab it from points because we're on primitives. So if we're on primitives, we cannot just use add because it needs to uh, it doesn't know what to what to uh, what to grab by default. Point is going to be zero. Curve view. Right. So then we're loading with this the the uh, the curve view attribute, and then grow minus equals curve view. All right. So you can see now they're not the same anymore. Um, now the ones on top shoot. Oh, I think they are finishing faster. Let's try curve view times five so we can see a little bit easier what's going on if it's actually working. Minus 10. Oh, I'm, I should highlight it actually before I start doing something. Oh, let's just play. Oh, we need to probably, okay, set the grow a little bit higher, set to five. Right, so now you can see it's the ones bl down below are gonna grow uh, first because the curve U value, remember if we're gonna go on our curve, is we have a zero to one value on the curve. It's gonna remain there on the points. It's gonna remain there on the copies. Here we are keyframing 
the intrinsic value of the alembic, so just the, the frame. But then we're subtracting the value of our curve u. So, and I mean, we could, you could ramp this as well. And I'm, I'm multiplying it by two, but it will mean that, uh, and you can see some go negative. We don't want them to start negative. So maybe we want to say, if grow is below zero, grow equals zero. All right. So now at least they don't go negative. So now you can see. So if we have look at our points, for example, our copies, so uh, primitive two, let's look at primitive numbers. So primitive two there Oop. is going to be the one that's going to grow first. Grow. So that one will start incrementing first, you can see there. And again, you can change this this thing if you want to change it. Like you could you can you could invert this if you wanted to go the other way around. I could say uh, t uh, times minus two, for example, and then they would the ones on top would grow first. But it just looks weird, so let's just not do that. So bloop, 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 bloop. Uh, all right, so let's invert it in. I mean, uh, pretty cool, right? So now we need to, of course, add these chops. And that's gonna give another problem. Let's just look at the problem first and then how we can solve it. So let's just uh, let's grab our in chops node that we have here. Let's put it down here. Let's put our channel after that one. So now it's gonna load this thing. Oh, we need to unpack our Alemix first, else we cannot really use it in shops. So let's unpack. Because remember, these are these Alemix are, are packed by default. So if I if I go in there and I try to select them, you can see they're just treated as points. Let's unpack them. Let's go to channel. All right, let's play. And you can see the issue. So it is it is working, but there's all right. It's not that clear everywhere, but you can see uh, because like same way we have with the leaf and the stem, when they weren't connected, it wasn't really well. You can see it's uh, it's not really doing it. So because it's it's it's. It's using each. It's it's working on each each one of these uh, individually. So we need to some kind of tell it to well to not do that. The problem here is we cannot really fu use fuse like we did before. Let me just show you because jobs will need uh, in this case a consistent point count and the point count will change if I go in here. So let me for example if I'm gonna fuse like say if I have five hundred six points here and go here ninety points. Because it's gonna because here they are super small and it's gonna fuse them together. And if I then put this into jobs, uh, press play. Uh, unless you're on an alien planet that has plants that do this, mm, yeah, not really what we want. Um, so this is a thing I had to think about a little bit when I made it, but it's actually quite simple. As a lot of things are, it's just generally you just need to figure out a way to sort of come up with the right solution. So what I uh, what I did is curious curfew <laughs> again, because we use that all the times. Right, so let's just do a sample. Um, maybe we want to, oh, we already have it by the way. We already have curfew, that's nice. Um, but, we need to transfer it because what it has now is the curve view from the main branch. We want to transfer attributes curve view from our packed geometry. So then every uh, curve will have its own curve view. So that should work, I think. And then uh, we can use this curve view to sort of blend the, the base edges here to sort of blend them together with the original branch. So let's just have a look at what that would look like. Let's just do an attribute pop. 
and let's first input channel second input let's do let me just think a little bit uh oh yeah let's just do this thing and let's just let's just have a look at it um all right let's just yolo all right uh let's just do import point attribute again from the second input what do we want input position we want to input the position from the from the other other uh from the other input and if we plug this into position we will have the thing without chops so the first input is going to be with chops so but that one has the issues the second one doesn't have the issues right okay so we want to uh we want to mix between the well, what only on the tips. So we wanna 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 mix positions. Wanna mix original position with our uh, with our import position. Boop. No. Boop. Put it in position. Right. So we wanna mix. What do we wanna mix with? We want to import. Uh, oh, we don't just wanna bind bind an attribute and uh, what do we want to bind we want to bind curve, curve view again right uh curve view all right ramp parameter spline ramp all right let's just do it like that let's just do it like that uh all right and then we want to use that as the bias let's put a spline ramp Let's just have a look and uh, what this is going to do. This is actually going to work. Okay. So that seems to work. You can see them stick to the, uh, to the original position. Probably only want to do this on our, let's have a look. Mm. Do we want to, let me just look at my at my old file where I uh, where I did it. One second. So what I'm actually thinking what I might do because this original curve also has the curve view. We don't really need to blend that one. So maybe we're gonna try is attribute rename. Rename. Right. Let's so uh, I was gonna think. Let's rename point curve view to curve two. <laughs> All right. And let's bind curve two in there. Let's see if that works. So then we're only doing it with the attribute that's only on the second branch, because then then we're not really uh, do uh, and that okay that doesn't seem to work. So I do need to use the actual curve view in there. Okay, I was thinking maybe it also works, but it doesn't. All right, let's just do it like that. All right. Okay, we do seem to still have a problem. I think I was doing it the wrong way around. Maybe that. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Okay. Perfecto mundo. All right. Uh, yeah, now we have this thing. Let's uh, let's give it some geometry and then let's then we can start copying our uh, our leaves on it.